Welcome everybody. This is a brand new episode of the Indie Grounds podcast. I'm excited because a lot of the previous episodes I had been working on and pre-recording for a long time, and this is going to be the first kind of fresh new episode that I have for you that I cooked up and got prepared, and I'm excited for this one because this guy is a huge influence on the indie scene, especially you could kind of call the new 2000s indie scene, uh, past 2010, you could say, and even stretching a little bit into our day today. Now, the name is Bon Iver, but the musician, the mastermind, the writer, creator behind that band is a man named Justin Vernon. And that's who I wanted to talk about. You probably know him, the high falsetto singing voice behind an acoustic guitar, and he wrote about Emma forever ago. So we're going to dive deep into what led up to the making of that album, what inspired him, uh, a little bit into the years before that as well, and then, of course, what happened when he released that famous album, Uh, around 2010, I believe, 2011. But anyway, Justin Vernon grew up in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. And it was one of those things where he was a musician uh, throughout junior high, high school. He was in band, uh, went to some band camps and so forth. And what's interesting is when he graduated high school, And then as he went into college, even, he still was not fully committed on being a musician. Now, don't get me wrong. He was in uh, one band in particular. He probably hopped around bands, you know, amongst friend groups as well. But it was nothing fully serious to him yet. In fact, after he went through college, he majored in religious studies So again, he wasn't going the music route. He was going other directions in life. But around that time, he had formed the band with his high school and college friends called Mount Vernon. And they did release material. Not thing official, though. Uh, It is available to listen to online. I think even if you type in YouTube, you can find some of their singles online. But nothing officially Uh, nothing definitely through like a record label or anything like that. And what happened was, uh, after that, they formed another new band among the years, him and his friends kind of went in and out of different groups. Maybe different people would sub in, sub out, maybe they would move in, uh, and then leave the band and so forth. So him and his bandmates were, were like high school friends growing up. And they just kind of all came in and out of the band. If anything, the only constant person was Justin Vernon himself. Every of his friends seemed to just kind of come and go amongst their music scene. But after college, him and his band at the time finally kind of took steps to say, you know what, we're going to take this music career a little bit more seriously and to do that they moved down to North Carolina so this is kind of setting up uh, the events leading up into him recording that album because again you have to I like to kind of set up the scene here for this moment it's him and his high school friends they've known each other now you know been touring together been performing music together probably five to ten years Now they're entering their mid-20s. And what's interesting is Justin at the time had started to date one of his fellow good friends. They had known each other, I think I read, since primary school, if not middle school. So they'd known each other for a very long time. They had started dating. So you would think this is perfect, right? You know, let's kind of think about Justin at this moment in time. You know, he's moved to a brand new city, so you got a brand new beginning in front of you. He has toured with his junior high and high school friends now for like five to ten years playing music together. That's almost every musician's dream. He is now dating, you could say like 
his high school sweetheart maybe a little earlier. Maybe it wasn't that serious yet earlier on in the years, but now he's dating somebody that he's known for a very long time. Life should be great, right? Like life should just be amazing for him. And yes, they're not popular yet. You know, they hadn't really hit their stride. They hadn't busted into the music scene, but you know, they they seem to be having fun. They seem to be having a good time, right? Well, unfortunately, not for Justin. Because just as you could say quickly, he had built up this kind of group behind him. It all kind of started falling apart. And it all was from him. Now, I'm going to explain what I mean here in a second. But him and the first girlfriend had broken up and he had moved on to a second girlfriend. So again, I know like this is kind of weird. This is kind of specific. But I'm setting up the stage for what happened to create Bon Iver. So he breaks up with girlfriend A, he starts dating girlfriend B. And what's interesting is in an interview, he had said that when he started dating the second girlfriend, he immediately knew it wasn't going to work out. Because he kind of described it, I don't know if this has ever happened to you before, but it's almost like when you get over uh, a breakup, by dating somebody else almost. You know what I mean? Where you know that the new person is not really the person for you, but they're almost like a distraction from the original person who broke their heart. That's kind of the situation that Justin was in. So he's dating her. Again, he's realizing I shouldn't be dating her and he breaks up with her. And he's still heartbroken over the first girlfriend. Then... He leaves his band too. And then on top of that, he moves away from North Carolina and goes up to meet his parents back in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. So I would love to ask him what was going on in his mind because that's like an almost 20-hour car ride right there. What is going on in his head that has caused him to do this? And he's given bits and pieces throughout the years, the interviews, kind of how he set everything up. And it just kind of seemed like at the time he was lost. He didn't know what to do. He didn't know where to go. He didn't know what to do with his life even. You know, he had sensed at that moment in time that music was not getting him anywhere. His, his band was not successful. They weren't going to go anywhere. They weren't going to do anything big. He knew that his newest relationship didn't amount to anything because he wasn't really in love with her. He was in love with another woman. It was, you can just kind of see his life was just crumbling underneath him, you know. And I know maybe I said it before, I described it in a way that it happened quickly. But I think the more I think about it, it almost was like a slow decay, you know, almost painful Like he could see everything falling apart around him and he did not know what to do. So he literally jumped in a car and drove back home. So he gets back home uh, and I think I had read that his parents actually weren't home when he got back. So then he drove up to a family cabin, literally just out in the woods, a humongous acre place Nothing is around, and it's the dead of winter. If you're from the Midwest, you know the winters are serious. You know, this is not like it snows once and then it melts the next day. Like, snow is on the ground forever. He is, you know, completely locked himself away from civilization. Now, he did eventually, you know, reach out to his parents. He let them know where he was. Uh, But for the next, I believe he had said two to three weeks after he set up camp there, which he only brought a busted up guitar, recording equipment, and alcohol. And that was it. And uh, I think he said for food, he actually shot and skinned and ate deer that were on the property. And then from time to time, I think he said like once a week, his dad would drop by and like maybe drop off like a bag's worth of groceries, probably just to check and see if he was alive. And they kind of just left him alone after that. 
Now, I don't know if this is completely true. You know, I'm not Justin, obviously. Uh, but what I've read is a lot of people say that he went up there solely for the purpose to record. But I found a couple of interviews that he's actually said that was not the case. That he, when he went up there, he literally had no idea what he was going to do with his life. Yes, he had the recording equipment, but he didn't even really bring it out with him to the cabin until at least, I would say, three weeks to a month later. So he did not go to that cabin for the sole purpose of recording a session. Definitely no album. But that does lead me to the next part. You know, he says, he, you know, he's, now he's been there for about a month. Maybe he's going into the second month and he's getting bored, you know. So he starts to at least help out around the, the cabin that he's living at. You know, he starts clearing things. I think he kind of, he said he made like a deal with his dad. Like if he's going to live there, he has to like help out the property. You know, he can't just kind of bum around. So he starts doing things and kind of starts, you know, getting active again. And because, you know, it's the middle of winter in Wisconsin and he's out in the middle of nowhere, he eventually gets bored, you know. So he's been listening to music during this time and he kind of thinks like, well, let's just kind of bust out the recording equipment, kind of mess around, you know, nothing too serious. I, I kind of just need to pass the time while I sort out my head. And he starts to record demos where he starts layering his voice and he said he got a big inspiration from like church choirs and children's choirs, just seeing how they lay each part of their voice in harmony. So he starts messing around with that. He, 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 I think the first song that he actually completed and demoed was Stax off that album. Uh, so he's starting to pull some stuff together. But again, he's not completely serious about a music career. You know, this... If anything, just seemed like he was just doing it to pass the time. Oh, and I forgot to mention it. Um, as well as, you know, the girlfriend situation happening, leaving his band and his friends behind, and literally just driving up his car back to Wisconsin, he also had been very ill at that time. I think it said he had mono and pneumonia uh, or some kind of respiratory disease. So, you know, again, he wasn't even feeling that great at the time. He was not recording a demo at the time. Uh, but, you know, eventually he starts getting his strength back. Eventually, even he starts kind of sorting out his life and uh, figuring some things out. And he pretty much comes back to civilization again. Uh, and I imagine he apologizes and meets up with his friends again because his friends were the first ones to hear his demo tapes. And they told him, Hey, man. Hey, Justin. This is serious. You got to show this to some kind of record label. And pretty much from the urging from his friends, he goes for it. He meets up with an independent label. They mix the album. They make a few changes. And I think one of the last thing he does with his old band is he brings in some horns and percussion instruments behind it. But the majority of the album was all him. You know, it was solely him mixing and and him playing on guitar uh, very few parts of it was other people and in, being involved but of course he gets the debut album for bon Iver, and the rest is history you know won a grammy not long after that he's made several albums after his name just because the uniqueness of it is very well known especially among the indie rock scene and the indie music scene bon Iver is very well known and he's still active. He's still going down to this day. But I hope you all enjoyed it. That was pretty much the summary of Bon Iver, where they came from, how Justin Vernon got his start. And I will see you all next week. Take care.